So for this last session, what we're going to do is each uh, presenter, Philip Schmidt, Al Nishnes, Kathy Perkins, Anka Mulder, and Frida Wolfenden, have um, 10 minutes sharp to present, and then five minutes Q&A. So if you speak longer, there is no time for question. If you're shorter, then there is more interactivity. Uh, Sandra will help me to keep uh, track on time. And we are uh, looking forward to a uh, fantastic session. Thanks so much for being here. And I think we start with Philip. Uh, you have all the bios uh, in the material. So uh, I will turn over to you without further ado. Thanks. Cool. Great. Um, so I am hoping to speak less than 10 minutes and maybe talk a little more with everyone here about um, some of the things that have been going through my mind as I was listening to the presentations yesterday and today. Um, so I'm, I co-founded um, a project called Peer-to-Peer -Peer University, uh, which is really um, two things. One, it's a, an online community of people who want to learn with each other. Uh, so we break down that idea that there has to be a professor who has all the knowledge um, and kind of pours it into the heads of the students who are sitting, actually kind of like we are now uh, here, um, <laughs> ironically. Um, so the, the idea is that really anyone can come and offer a course on, on any topic and they have a lot of freedom on how they want to structure the course. Um, and so there's kind of this community of people who are interested in learning and sharing and running courses with each other. And um, that's grown. We've had hundreds of courses on, on you know, any imaginable uh, topic, uh, a lot of web development courses. Uh, we um, may I point out a few people. There's Karen Fassenpower sitting there who's been running a really amazing School of Ed pilot, which is kind of what um, teacher professional development could look like. Uh, if we didn't have all those constraints around credits and uh, teachers not kind of being stuck in the institutions and not being allowed to do the things they wanted to do. And so we're really exploring kind of what that could look like. So I said P2P are, are two things. It's, so it's, on one hand, it's that community of people who really want to figure out what, um, uh, who want to learn with each other. And then secondly, it's a lab. It's a place that attracts, or historically, it's always attracted people who were interested in asking big questions about what education could look like. Um, and um, I need to kind of keep an eye on my slides. Um, so the, 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 I think the original idea was that, um, you know, we live in this uh, Sir John Daniel's famous iron triangle problem with the industrial model of education being broken. Well, we don't live in that world anymore, right? We live in a world today where, you know, more and more people have computing devices, um, some even smaller than, than that one. Um, we have open source software that lets us do you know, a huge variety of things, be producers online. Uh, we have the, the legal tools to support you know, sharing of information so that we can, uh, we can do it safely and with, with the kind of rights reserved that we care about. And we've seen amaz amazing collaboration communities um, evolve around this. And so if, if, we, if we were going to imagine what the university could look like based on, on these things, then you know, let's, let's do that, let's build it. And I think that's kind of the spirit of, of P2P, where you don't, we don't start with the, the big buildings and the, the old institutions, uh, no offense, Harvard, um, but we kind of think, you know, like we, we, we attract people who uh, are kind of on the fringes of academia, many of whom actually have degrees, but they're kind of, they've, had a, they've struggled through their institutional, uh, kind of like Joey, actually, who's been a, a friend and who's run a course on P2P, uh, you know, someone who kind of has always been a bit of an academic outcast, but was, you know, interested enough that he would play in the, in the system. And so P2P is, is kind of a place for people like that. We, we don't, so one of the things we realized is a good way to advance this, this um, movement is to find partners who share our values and who can have are respected in certain communities who are content experts in certain communities and then work with them on putting together courses in kind of you know sets of courses in certain areas so we work with creative commons uh school of open uh, kathy talked about it this morning or mentioned it this morning uh, we've been doing a lot of work with mozilla over the past few years and um uh, mark sermon is on our board uh, and so is kathy actually uh, we do a lot of work with the Open Knowledge Foundation now. Um, they're a UK-based charity that looks at uh, knowledge and data 
And so they're starting a school of data with us, uh, where the idea is that you know, more people need data wrangling skills. And so we kind of, we find friends and kindred spirits in, in, in the organizational space, and we try to build schools with them. Um, and, and three questions we've been thinking about quite a bit uh, uh, over the last uh, two years. One is, um, uh, you know, the, there's kind of online learning uh, has a pretty bad reputation. I think uh, completely, um, it's completely justified that it, it does have that bad repu reputation because what people have, have done is they've done a really bad model of, of classroom education, which is exactly this model, actually. One person standing and, and kind of talking at a, a bunch of people. Um, and then they've moved that online. And of course, it, was, it really stank it, kind of in the real world, but at least you can see each other and you can talk to your neighbor, right, which is probably more interesting. But um, if you move that online, it's obviously going to stink even more. And so, you know, we've done some thinking around how do you do things like uh, many of you are experts on pro project-based learning, for example, or problem-based learning or constructed. There are all these great ideas about how education could work. And, you know, so we're experimenting with some of them online. Um, another big question that we've um, spent more time um, on about a year and a half ago in, in which, uh, 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 you know, to, to all of our benefit now, other people are spending a lot of time thinking about, and um, maybe another person to point out is Carla Casilli. If you haven't um, talked to her, she's the Open Badges Infrastructure Project Manager? Project Lead. Um, so uh, we, Mozilla and, and P2P, kind of were thinking about what are these recognitions for the kinds of skills that people care about and what does that look like in the digital world? If you, right, we, we know the certificate you hang on your wall and, you know, that has some limitations. And if we move that idea online, what would that look like? And so, you know, we've developed this idea of digital badges and Mozilla has really grown, grown that into an amazing project, built an entire infrastructure that all of us can now connect into. And then we've spent a lot of time thinking about assessment and, um, uh, you know, I think we're still, and, and when I listen to the other people, I think we're at the early stages of what assessment should or could look like online using technology. Um, and I wanna um, maybe just spend two, two minutes, um, let me see, yeah. Uh, so um, this, is, this is one of the examples. Like, so if we're looking at what online courses could look like in assessment, we've built this, this model of courses that we call challenges, which is, um, you know, takes a project-based learning approach, moves it online, uh, kind of fixes some of the problems with courses like start and stop dates so you can start at any time the community can kind of evolve and grow over time and people take leadership roles and and we help people structure their content in a way that uh, encourages production so you have to make something in a challenge um, it encourages you to understand why the challenge or this course is important to you so there's kind of a context setting stage at the beginning and you know it helps you ask well why is this a problem I want to spend some time on and why do I care about it what does it mean for my life and how do I apply this to my my life and then you know we work we kind of give you enough scaffolding and, and hints and advice and encourage you to work with each other that you can have a rich and engaging online learning uh, experience um, and now just the last few minutes I think I'd rather point out something that's kind of struck me as I, as I was listening to, to other people and something that we we care about a lot because even, you know, even from the name is peer-to-peer -peer university. It's, it's uh, you know, the peers are people, they're not computers. And so I think when we look at technology, um, uh, and I have two minutes and that's perfect. If we look at technology, I think there are two kind of two mindsets almost that, that are, strike me. And it, the first mindset is we have this computing power and we can compute things, right? So what's really hard to do for one person in their head with this amazing machine, we can, you know, we can compute things. But then wh what I'm excited about is that we can actually use technology to connect people. And so uh, the, the compute mindset for me is, is really kind of the old days and, and the connect mindset is, is the future. And I think the web and the, the things that the web has enabled and a lot of this innovation thinking that Joey talked about. And so I wanna just say what compute versus connect means in the learning and the assessment space. And so in the learning space, the kind of analogy that, that at least in my head makes sense is, you know, it's that voice in your GPS that says, you know, drive along this road, turn left after 200 meters, turn right after 200 meters. And we're building this perfect map of the knowledge space. And then we can tell everyone exactly where they have to go. And if they get stuck somewhere, we tell them exactly where they, where they need to go. 
Now, the other, the, the connect mindset is, well, here are the keys to the car or the bicycle. Go off, and then if you get stuck, ask someone you meet along the way. And so I think the way I talk about it, you know where my bias lies, but I think this is an interesting way to think about this. And then with respect to assessment, and um, I, I thought it might be a good idea to bring porn into the OER uh, <laughs> movement. <laughs> But what I mean, what I mean with this, and I, you, you're probably glad I didn't put images in, but uh, what I mean with this is that when we talk about assessment in this compute versus connect space, then it feels to me like a lot of the emphasis and efforts right now comes from the compute mindset where we look at the things that we can measure, that we can compute. And so a lot of the automated assessments are, are really around, um, <laughs> around the um, kind of things where we can say what's right and what's wrong and we are un uncomfortable with um, ambiguity and uh, and the porn uh, side which uh, is again where my <laughs> uh, bias lies is that <laughs> we we all know when it when it is something and even though we so that, right so like w when we see someone who has certain skills we can tell that they have those skills, even if it's really difficult to describe in detail what those skills are. But in many cases, we have a sense of if someone is, a, is curious, if someone has passion, if someone can pro solve problems, if, they're, you know, if they can work with other people. Like we, we have a sense for those things, but they're really difficult to, to measure in kind of with com you know, compute, and so we often disregard them. So anyway, so that's... I just wanted to kind of get this compute versus connect mindset maybe in, into the audience and see how, how, how people. <laughs> well, so with porn is like you, you, it's very difficult to describe what is porn and what isn't, but when you see it, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> we knew we liked you, now we know why. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Actually, time for questions. So we did great uh, questions, remarks, comments. Micros are there. Now oh, everyone is shocked. I like how we're leaving this slide. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to read the Twitter stream. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Let's take pictures. No questions? Come on. You must have comments. Come on. Thoughts. Seriously. How many people feel like the the? Uh, how many people? First of all, have the same sense that there's this commute, uh, compute versus connect kind of idea. Like, how, does that at least broadly resonate with people? And then how many people feel like we're going down the compute, the compute path largely in OER? Nobody. Okay. How many people feel we're going down the connect path? Why? <laughs> What's the we? I mean, I, th I think if, um, if we're talking about sort of what, like what questions are we identifying and what, uh, you know, how are we plotting things out, maybe it's, it's possible that, that maybe we are focusing more on the compute side. But I mean, at least my experience of, of, of OER is pretty much Wikipedia is, is you know, is, is sort of in the, in the use of. And I feel like I interact with people who are much more focused on the content and on connecting with each other and on interacting with each other. So I think that, I, I, you know, maybe there's a distinction between sort of what's happening in a somewhat organic way versus what the plan is. And there's obviously lots of overlap, but maybe they are kind of distinct questions. It, I just, I just add out of that, I, I would agree. I think it depends on which OER projects you're looking at as to which path they're going down. Um, I think that we do a pretty good job at large in the OER community of thinking about standards and interoperability around licensing and technology and hardware, et cetera. I think we're in a lot of agreement that Connect is a better way to go for all the reasons Joey was talking about this morning. Um, but I, uh, you know, Esther was making some comments this morning about how <coughs> in US K-12, for example, they're really driving down the compute path in terms of standardized testing and tying teachers, you know, pay directly to the test outcomes. Well, that's a very compute pathway, and that'll be reinforced in systems. So it's a good point. I think it, we have to be cautious. So maybe the, the, so of course I agree with both of you, and I think the three of us are firmly in the connect, and many of us as well. I guess maybe when I say we, I'm more, I feel like 
the open education resources movement has a tremendous opportunity to kind of show the way or show the, the potential of connect, whereas the education system seems to be firmly on the compute path right now. And so we should really, rather than, or actually, no, we, I, on what we, what I do or what I am working on is, you know, I, I, I kind of have to consciously look away from the education system a little bit because it's so difficult to convince them of some of these ideas. So I'd rather play over here, hope it goes well, and then may, maybe people get inspired by it. Anyway, thank you very much.